Okay, my friends, this is going to be extremely interesting. I'm going to show you my panel of particles, and I believe I have found the particles that they have literally missed because of using the gigantic protons they're smashing, huge bits and pieces. We're using light. Now, they say they're dismissing the, the anomaly that they found, which shows that my research is correct and theirs is wrong. So they're dismissing that, saying that, well, earlier data from CERN found that beauty quarks, which I will show you, weren't behaving as expected. New analysis shows the prior data was flawed. So, they were wrong because they were right. <laughs> okay, they're talking about Higgs fields and all of the elementary particles. This is the new model. Let me show you what they're talking about for Higgs fields. Because they are crashing things head on, and they're seeing these these fields, but they, these are made out of gigantic particles. They're looking for the smallest little bits and pieces that exist. That's what this is all about, what's the smallest particles that exist. And they did find them. Let me show you them. This is what they found in 2013. Don Lincoln from Fermilab announced these particles were found, and this was the fixed particle, and this was the really massless very powerful field particle. So this one is, is, as I know now, is gravity and it is dark matter and it is all literally all the mass of which is called, what's called a gluon. Two of these together, black and white or red or green or blue, are considered by me to be an electron. Now by them, they call them an electron neutrino and a muon neutrino. That's what these two are. Now, in light, two electrons, which are gluons or electrons, whatever you want to call them, they just look like bat bar magnets. They glue together and they make a photon of light. We were able to crush the fields, not head on, but in a funnel. And what happened was we crushed them just like CERN does and created the muon, sterile muon, and electron shower. There's the black ones and the electron shower. And this is how we did it. And this is a, a venturi, which forces all the particles. You, you can't even see the venturi. It's such an explosive event. But that's where it happens right there. And it's a, it's a restriction. And now all you have is the white particles, which are monopoles. The white in, the, in here is a, is a white electron shower. It's exactly what they say, coming from the neutrinos, which is the black and white one, squirted through here. So we have monopoles here of sterile muons, and we have monopoles here of electron, raw electron showers. Okay, I don't know if I mentioned before or not, but this is the particles. I think I did. These are the particles that that the Fermilab and Don Lincoln was talking about way back in 2013. And this is what's called a Dirac neutrino, which is the black and the white attached together. We were able to split them, as I think I showed you. Now, they work precisely as Don says. And it, it is, in summary, the extended particle, the black one, has a fixed size, just solid, it's just a mass, and it's heavy as hell. It may have a fuzzy edge, which is literally the color. And the point-like particle is just a, it has no mass at all, but it has a, uh, like he says, it's a, a zero size. But it, the zero size particle have an extended field surrounding them, which they do. They, I mean, they just explosive. And that is the white particle. Now, the black particle, is, and it, he shows it right here. I, whoops. And this is, I got a hold of Don. I said, Don, I found your particles. And uh, we went back and forth many times, and it um, it ended up. I don't know. You, I don't know how to explain it, but he, he didn't want to see anything that I presented. Now I don't know whether you call this a rivalry or not, because I'm showing the particles that he's looking for, and very simple, very easy to do, and um, much more controllable than that, what they're doing. They're just slamming things together, gigantic particles. So instead of a proton being like this, which is what they, they, they can't get away from the standard model. Proton is not like that. A proton is this. It's 1823 of these Dirac neutrinos together, 
which is like two of these. If you were to down into that range, you'd be seeing this here, black and a glowing together. But as it is, they claim one gigantic piece is a proton. These are the tiniest parts they can find, way smaller than a proton. And they don't disagree with that, absolutely don't disagree. They are these particles actually split in half. One of these particles right here is the same as that right there. The dark side is on one side, the glowy side is on the other side. And it can be red, it can be blue-green, it can be blue, and I don't know, there might be other colors it can be too. But I, it may be only these three colors. And in, depending upon what they hit, the reflection of the point bounce against their field will depend on the color you see coming back. And it can be anywhere in between all these red, blue, green. That's the spectrum. You know how the spectrum runs all yellows and oranges and blues and greens and pinks and all that. That's the bounce back from the photons. When they bang into something, they, they release their energy backwards. All right, so this is what the photon looks like. Whoops, can you see that? Probably not. Nope. All right, here's what you can see now. These are the particles that Don's showing. All right, these are the particles we found. Same <laughs> exact same thing, and we found them from light, which is the smallest particles that exist. So, if you break apart photons or protons, you're going to end up somewhere with light. We, we got it. We started with light, so we ended up with light. And we could see them transition into this phase, which is two of these back-to-back -to -back together. And then all the rest is history, I showed you, or I will. By the way, let me finish up with Don Lincoln here. I, I did, like I said, I went back and forth with him quite a bit. Now, he does agree that the quantum foam exists, which is what I say. Well, how come nobody takes this into account? Where has where he got somewhere down here about the quantum foam? But he also talks about the standard model. He claims it's the most successful theory ever, which it, it is obviously not. If, it's, if there's a positive and negative, the W and Z boson work. Yes, ab absolutely. That's the white is the W, the Z is the black. And uh, quantum foam, he says empty space is not empty. Where is it? I don't know, somewhere down there he talks about, oh, here it is, quantum foam. It's not, it's not empty, it's full of light. I mean, how does light get from there to us? I'm showing you their particles, it's obviously saturated, and he knows this. And I contacted Don, I said, Don, I found the particles, they react, react exactly like you said, everything you said was right, we were able to photograph them, Here's, I showed him the pictures, I showed him there. all he said was, how did you take the pictures? I said, we took use CMOS smartphones. And, he, oh, 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 and, it, and then it really went off the scales. And I said, no, that's, it's, it's, or everybody else is doing it too. And he's, no, 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 you're crazy. And he very, it was, it ended up being very contentious. Now, will you call this a rivalry? Call it whatever you want. I'm starting to get a little upset that he won't stand up for himself. And somebody won't stand up for himself making the claims that he makes. He's on daily. Not quite as much as me, <laughs> but he's out there every day. And him and uh, Kirstie Alley, uh, I forget what her name, no, not, not Kirstie Alley. Um, she does the neutrinos and one. She's a neutrinos girl. Anyway, both of them making all these statements, refuse to engage. I've contacted them many, 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 many times, and no response anymore. They ask you to contact them. I think you should contact them. Say, why won't you talk to Roger? Want a phrase to find? Have a question? Yeah, why won't you talk to Roger, Don? So I, I'm going to treat this as a rivalry now because I know he's feels, he feels threatened. That's the only possibility for someone not to engage with me, with the evidence that I presented. And here is the evidence. Okay, my friends, this may turn into a bit of a rivalry, which I believe it already has. I contacted Fermilab years ago and I was in contact with Don Lincoln and we went back and forth and finally he dismissed me and will not engage. So, I am taking it to the streets. <laughs> this is my atomic model and I can prove it by our experiments, not by some, some statements. And we started with light, so we started with the smallest particles. When you start with 
explosions of literally trash. It's debris by the time they look at it. And they can see these particles. Don, Don found them. And I said, I, I got them. I know exactly what you found, Don. No, 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 no. Well, let's talk it through. Okay, so what are my claims? Well, these are the things that Don Lincoln found as the smallest particles that exist. I agree. And he claims that one is just a bowling ball, solid, fixed particle, and that one is a glowy, no-mass particle. I also agree. We found them here in light, and then they show up just before they explode at the Venturi. This is light being literally accelerated and then crashing into the Venturi and only the white particles can get through because of the design. Now, they started like this. Fermi Lab sees them like this. They just see them as, as the tiniest bits of debris in the big field of, of debris. They hit, hit things head on and they just splash everywhere. We're controlling them right through our device. So these are the particles. Now, how do we see these manifest themselves? They come through here as a light wave. And a wave of light means there's a magnetic field ahead of the particle. The particle is a magnet. So everybody in front has to get out of the way. They glow. This thing now is accelerating because of the Venturi. A Venturi accelerates things. It's just, it just happens. And that particle is being pulled out of here. And now at the Venturi, it's such a tight squeeze that only the white can get through. The black separates, and here it is in detail. You see the black? You see the white? Up here, these are the black and white. A muon neutrino, electron neutrino. They call it a Dirac neutrino. The black is the muon. The white is the electron. It's a Dirac neutrino. When it hits our restriction, they split. It becomes a sterile muon and an electron shower, exactly what you see here. But just before it hits over here, it's a Dirac neutrino, and then it becomes a photon. And I can show all of these phases, and then I can actually show you the Higgs fields where they reunite. They have, in CERN and Fermilab, they have things a little, a little off kilter. Let me show you what a Higgs field does, and the only place the Higgs fields show up we can find is right at the the point when the white particle comes back to the black particle. Then you get the Higgs fields. It's not where the Higgs fields are there and then they create all these other particles. No, it's just the opposite. The particles coming back together create the Higgs. Okay, I'm sure you figure you understand helium. Well, I think you probably do not because helium is not just a little light gas with a couple of protons and a couple of neutrons. It's all these different particles. So you got helium 6 and 7 and 9 and helium this and boom, bada boom. All of these things. What's the difference? The difference is some of them have two or three of these particles not enough and some of them have two or three particles too much. They want to get here in a stable range. You see right there. They have too many, eventually they'll kick off and they'll, they'll come down to this. They got too little, eventually they'll kick up to that. Stability. It's as simple as that. Everything that's made is made of these particles. They want to be in a mass of stability. That is not the normal case. Well, it's, it's, stability is, is, is good, but it's not, it's not everything is stable. No. Just because something says, well, that's stable. No, it's not. It could easily change with the right nucleophilic substitution. Something else is not well understood. You know, I said nucleophilic substitution not understood. That's an absolute fact. These particles here are the nucleophilic particles that are in blood. And body parts can turn into stone in the right conditions. This is actually a goose, and that is actually the feather patterns in this goose's head. And this happened in a wet condition with nucleophilic substitution. And you see that side is wet because he died like that. And there's a wet, certain conditions of a flood, certain chemistry, certain conditions, preserve soft tissues just like it was perfect in stone. And this is why they're calling me a crazy person, because I discovered this process, and it upends geology. So here I am in physics. I had to go through, I, I had to go through every single thing, chemistry, physics, 
I, I went to Rice for chemistry. Of course, I had all that stuff long ago, but I did it just up recently in the last 10 years or so uh, through Coursera. And I went to um, University of Geneva for particle physics. I went to um, Johns Hopkins for um, genomics and I, all kinds of places. I, I took courses at Yale, which you don't have to pay for any of that stuff. You don't, you don't get any credit. Nobody will ever do anything for you about it. But I engage with the people at, um, at Fa not Fermi Lab, that they won't talk to me, at um, University of Geneva. They're very nice. And they saw my stuff and they were, they were quite, they were very cordial about it. They said, wow, this is interesting. No, not a single negative word from them. And everywhere else in the world, <laughs> total difference. But now they're doing the same thing that we were doing, is focusing and using CMOS. And that's, but they're still focusing big, gigantic things. They hit this, and then, like, there's two big chunks of these, only they're big, big, huge particles. Bam! And everything goes flying. They're just seeing all kinds of garbage. And every now and then, they'll see one just like that, all by itself. And every now and then, they'll see one of those that's not all by itself. It's half and half, the black and the white, which I showed you. And that's the smallest particles that exist. And these particles of nucleophilic substitution use those little tiny charges to create bi biology and keep biology working. It's, it's just not understood, totally under not understood. Chemistry's totally changed. The nucleophilic substitution of this is what we live on all day long. All of this stuff is changing every molecule in your body every few seconds. And it's changing it and dragging something out and bringing something new in. This whole thing has to change. These are not anywhere near what they say. Hydrogen is at least 1825 or so electrons. It's like this. It's not like this with one tiny little electron. So we got a lot of thinking to do. All right, Don, let's talk, my friend. See, here it is right there. D electrons are readily removed by ionization. Ions are this. A little particle gets removed and goes somewhere else because it needs it. And it carries something with it. On the other side, this part over here, they're generally stable and they're, they're in the core. So they drag around these little bits and pieces and they drop them off and pick things up. That's how your body works. It's continuous nucleophilic substitution. Only in my mud fossils, they stayed for such a long time that they found the molecules that would stabilize them, not necessarily the ones that would just come and go. And that's what happens in your body. But if you stayed long enough, you would become stabilized just like this in the right conditions. That's why I'm considered a tinfoil hat guy, and that's what I've been called by Don Lincoln himself. Okay, so I have shown you, or will show you, our particles. It was the white one and the black one. This is the Dirac neutrinos matter and antimatter. Call it whatever you want. That is the muon, and this is the electron neutrino. Now, the majorna, they're showing it sort of glowy and sort of unglowy, but matter and antimatter, they're the same thing. I can't imagine why they're the same thing if they're, they have a different name. <laughs> okay, so a half of a photon is a Dirac neutrino. It's the glowy and the dark side. The dark side never changes. They're both exactly the same. The white can glow and it can get less glow. This is a green photon just ready to collide and it will divide. Collide and divide. <laughs> look at the spikes coming up from the top and the bottom. Now let's look at the red. Alright, this is my claim. That particle right there is identical to the green particle I just showed you. You see it there? Same thing. Now, it's spiking up here. You see it's really getting toasty right there. Before, it's eh. And back here, it's a neutrino, which I believe is a tau neutrino. So it goes, whoops, this thing doesn't focus well, of course. There's, there's the tau neutrino. There's the photon. And there's the real charged photon. And here it hits at the venturi and explodes and divides. Now, what else do you see here? I'm showing you, every one of these is a neutrino. You see this one up, it's going up and down. These are going sideways. This is glowing a half to the left and a half to the right. 
it's just incredible the number of different particle energies. Every one of these is a different energy. You see that? That's a hell of an energy right on that side and almost nothing here. And I, I don't have a whole lot of explanations for a lot of it, but I have explanations for most of it. And we have divided the black particle from the white. You see how the white is sticking out in the front here? This is all the same particle here. This is one shot. And that's the whole same thing. This particle here, the white is in the back now. Why is the white in the front here? Why is this black in the back and the black is in the front? What happens is they charge up as they go and they sort of roll down the road. They call it the muon wobble. This charges up and eventually that one will come in the front and this will be pushed to the back and that'll charge up and the other one will come around and that's what the, how they spin. That's why they spin. This is, I believe, a heavier particle than that. I don't know. I can see the two blacks and one white. Is the one white equal to two, the two blacks? I don't know. I just said that. <laughs> Hold on a second. Okay, this is how I'm going to prove my theory. And it's not a theory, it's proven. And if Don Lincoln will stand up for himself, we can talk. Here's what's going to happen. They're setting off a nuclear bomb. Well, what is a nuclear bomb? It's a, something that's so dense with particles that just it wants to fall apart already. What they do is they explode it inward and it goes out. All of the, the white particles go first. Then the black particles follow them. The black particles are the dense and they are the ones that Don calls the fixed ones. I agree. So what will happen is on the tarmac, boom! Out goes the white ones. They burn the hell out of everything. Don't move anything at all. Then comes the black ones. Can we prove this with a nuclear bomb? We absolutely can. The first thing that will hit that, it's about, I think this is close to a mile away, will be just a white, insane whiteness, and it'll burn. And then the black comes and blows it over. And I'd like to see if when the black arrives, it is cold, because I think it will be. If it's, they're opposites, one of them is no mass whatsoever, but all burn, and the other one is all mass and no burn, and it just takes that house down. Originally, nothing happens at all, watch. And again, this is uh, Adam Central. And this shows exactly what happens in a nuclear bomb blast, and it, it is not a good place to be. All right, so the first thing you'll see, I'm, I got this run at very slow speed, is all white, and it just burns up. The house just burns. It's nothing else, but it burns. And then here comes a bam. And here it comes back. All that stuff comes back to fill the void. Now, watch, it, watch what happens in the house. Now, I'm going to slow this down or stop it probably. Watch what happens. All right, there goes the flash. They're in the house. Nobody's moving. And all it's doing is burning the curtains. Look, they fume up and it just... It's just being... They're being invaded by those electrons and now it's not... not the electrons have stopped and it just tore them to shreds. All right, I'm going to show this one more time, just in case you missed any of this. This is ultra important, you understand. All we had was burn. Anything flammable, what happens is the electrons cannot be absorbed, and it just fumes up, and everything goes to cheap molecules. Because anything that's combustible has cheap molecules in it. That's not combustible, that's metal. These are not cheap metal. Metals are in the more heavy particles and they can withstand this invasion. This cannot and neither can the curtains. But then the heavy particles come and just knock it down. It's like it's like the it's the wave and a particle field effect. Basically that's what it is. The particle is behind the wave. So the wave is coming out bang it's a house and it just doesn't do anything because all it is is a wave of magnetism, or I don't know how to explain it, but the next thing that comes is the particle, and then it's all over. Now watch it one more last time. Here you go. Alright, here it comes. Boom! Nothing but light, nothing but burn. Boom! There it goes, and everything turns around and comes back. Okay, so CERN and Fermilab, all of them, they're hitting these huge protons head on and just get, seeing all this mess and trying to find what particles exist in there. And all they, they really have 
virtually no clue what they're seeing other than they can measure some of these particles, how they decay and so forth. Yes, they can, but where they came from, they don't know. We know. We could see them manifest themselves somewhere around here. I was showing that. Here it is right here. All right, there's the particles manifesting, just as I showed, and exploding here. And the green do exactly the same thing. Only, whoops, the green are very, very powerful compared to the, um, to the red. And I can show that, too, right here. You see the green, how powerful it is? It's recombusting out here. It's, it's interfered with the red here. The red comes through very weak. And the green right on top of it through the same slit. All right, right above the red. The red is down here. The green is up here. Right through the slit together, coming this way. And the red is just pushed down, and the green goes forward. Now, the really cool thing about this is, look at the... These are doing barrel rolls. That never, ever, ever, ever happens. You see these? They're spinning this way. And the reason is, is that the white particles up above here are hitting the white particles below and going faster. They have to be. And it's making these things tumble like that. They never do that. They roll this way, always polarized towards the Earth. You see that? That's our electron showers. And I believe we're going to get a hell of a lot of juice coming back out of there. Now, there's a very interesting thing to happen here. These are raw, raw, raw electrons. And they desperately want to be back to the black. Now watch this. This is a little bit further into that interaction right here. You see it? It's way back there is the raw. And here, look at this. It pinched one of these Higgs fields and turned it blue. That blew my mind. Because <laughs> this starts red. is a, But you can see it pinched and elongated. A very strange interaction. And I have some other very, very strange ones that need to be looked at. This is light. This is light coming from a pulsed red laser through a venturi slit. This is what light does. It spins in a circle. Not only that, this is the slit. You see how some is over here and they got these boop, 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 and some is over here, boop, boop, boop. and what is this? Why are we seeing this effect? It, this is a drill. Light is a screw. It screws like this. Red is a little longer than the green. Green is down in here. Blue is like phew, I'll show you the blue, you won't believe it. And when it comes through here, some go that way. You see the particle? Some go that way. And some come under and go this way. Regardless of which side, they don't want anybody next to them. That's why it sets up these interference patterns. Those are white stripes of, of pushing particles. They stay away from me, you stay away from me, good. I'll cut down this line, you go down that line. Boom. Some go this way, some come under and go that way. They go over this way, they go over this way. All right, so that's what light does, it spins. All right, so I say these were the white particles. There's, nothing, there's not a single black one in there, zero. And here they start to reattach to the black. They can't stay white forever. They have to come back together. And when they do, they slam back together. All right, this is probably the best shot for you to see, even though this is the extended particle that pinched. You see these the fields? They went sideways and pinched. Very interesting. Now, the, the tip of all of these fields starts to re... you can almost see the black being absorbed into the white. Well, you actually can if you look close enough. And you will see it in a second. That's exactly what's happening. You see that black is being absorbed right back into the white. That circle right in the spot in the center. And you're going to see that in a second. And then it trails all the way down. It goes bip, 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 bip. And you can actually see them as they click into the, into the black particles. And I'll show you them actually clicking. It's stunning. And these are real, actual pictures. And the next one will be a real, actual picture of a, this exact same event. And it may even be these particles. I don't think it is this one, but it might be. I had a lot of these. I got a lot of them with Higgs fields. This one here is a real mystery. We're looking directly into the Venturi. You see these little white spits coming out of there? Those are the white particles. We're right in the midst of the white. We don't have any Higgs fields hitting us. Higgs fields are coming in all around the edges. And right behind us, if we were standing here, right behind us, they would start clicking together and making these fields. Now, look at this one. That one there... 
I believe is spinning backwards. They're supposed to spin a right hand spin. And you see all these little pulsations? I don't know if you can see those or not. Those are the actual, you're going to see it in a second, what, what is happening there. It's phenomenal. Right? And that, that reverse spinner made something happen that I never saw before. And it, and it, it made a little tiny mini trumpet. No, this is the blue. Same particle, but you really can't even see it. it. When it comes through, it comes through hot, and it's just a sizzler, spinning like crazy. Spins to the right, which means it will drift to the left. We're seeing all that same particle. Now we can see that it consists of the two whites and the two blacks, but down here you can't even tell. So we don't bother much with the blue. And as a matter of fact, we haven't done any experiments in a couple of years. Nobody will, will give us a second to look at it. I showed you the Higgs fields. These are literally those same Higgs fields. And this is the black being absorbed by the white as it smashes into it. And I showed you. You could see them on those other Higgs fields. Now, in the, in the cone that's coming out, this is a cone. And this is the tip of the cone. So it's coming at us. Now, these are the first ones to engage with the black. But these will as well. Every now and then, one or two way down inside the well here will will hit something and start to absorb a black but pre predominantly they're the tips you see and they make these six pack patterns where you push me I'll push you you push me I'll push you and you see the six pack rolled right up against another six pack against another six pack against another six pack another 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 that's just that's just the nature of the particles they can push and shove and form that specific type of a ring you see that? I showed you they can separate the black and white. Here it is right now, and the Russians in space. And this is a fact as well. I contacted Dan, Don Lincoln when I contacted the Russians about this to say, you know, here's what happened. Don found this black matter, and here's the white matter, and here's what you found in space, and here's how it separates, and here's how we separated it, and da la la la. And uh, it didn't go well. But this is the dark matter being pushed to the center and all the glowy particles on the outside. This is nothing more than gravity. It's dark matter and gravity. That's why all the particles are coming at us go right towards the earth. If, they're, if they have any energy to them, right into earth. Electricity, static, lightning, earth is a ground and it is loaded with dark matter. So it's not the same amount of black and white, I don't think. And as a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure of that for certain because when my, our particles went through that Venturi, they found some other black ones to reattach to very quickly. I don't think the other ones jumped around. All right, follow this through. This is as it collides at the Venturi. All the blacks keep smashing here. Bam, bam. It's a pulse laser. It's just like taking a hammer. Bam, bam, bam. And the blacks force the whites to concuss and come through. These blacks don't jump over to here. They're on this side of the Venturi. Now, where do the other ones come from? Because I'll show you what happens to them as they come further away from that action right here. They're all over the place. The blacks, just they're everywhere. They're just waiting for the white ones to come through, as far as I can determine. And all I want to see is to put <laughs> our um, solar collector right here. We can spray this. This is not just an explosion going every different direction like they do at CERN where they just create literally debris. And then they say, wow, we found all these particles and we created all this heat. Well, we could spray this onto a substrate. A substrate is a bunch of transition metals that will absorb these frequencies of light, these whatever energy. And red will not turn on some of these frequencies. You have to be way up, and I proved this too. As a matter of fact, I'm going to show you. Well, I'll show you. Anyway, this is, this is from red. It's not powerful. But it, it's, it certainly qualifies as, as muons and electron neutrinos. But it doesn't have the power as the blue does. And I guess I'll show you that right now. Okay, for those who care to pay attention, what have I shown? I have shown the Dirac neutrinos. I have shown the Higgs fields and the separation of the Dirac neutrinos into their muon and electron showers. 
just as CERN and Fermilab would like to see. And these are the same particles that Don Lincoln is talking about that I show as our particles. Now, what else have I shown? I've shown that in space, in zero gravity, the dark matter can go to the center, which actually is gravity. There's no gravity out there, so it comes in as the white particles push the dark to the center. So all white particles want to be attached to that dark. They pile up on there, and then eventually they push the others away. It's basically quantum in space. That's all quantum is, is it fills in enough of the dark to collect enough of the white to where it won't take anymore, and then they hold them off in a little bit of a distance. That's called a quantum distance. Now, is there anything else that I might be able to add to this? How about if we add free energy? All right, that's the interaction. Luminosity points to the energy value. The higher the luminosity, the higher the energy value. We started with that. We ended with this, which is literally like an atomic bomb. And this is how I think we can harvest it. If we could take that energy and put it right into what they call a, you know, a substrate of transition metals, CMOS, complementary metal oxide silicates, and it would force those, those white particles down, and before they can get back to the black, we're going to use them. They're going to force everything out of the way. You're going to be driving, driving motors and charging things and heating your house and lights and everything. And that you won't ever have to do another thing because you have enough coming out of here to keep the laser going. I believe this needs to be tested. That's all I'm asking. And that's what I'm asking Don for for seven years now. And I would like to see it done soon. All right. So I'm calling this a rival. You call it anything you want. I'm just looking for, for a voice. If what I have shown has any merit whatsoever... I should be able to be heard and discuss it, not just told I'm a tinfoil hat guy like Don did. So this is not going to stop. I'm in, I, I need to be heard. We need this. They're spending billions and billions of our dollars and avoiding what I think could be a very, very simple solution. All right. Thank you. I love you all. Okay. So Don Lincoln says this is the most successful theory in history. I say no. I say the only thing that exists is the glowy parts, the white, blue, green, so forth, and the black one, which is the Z boson. Those two together make a gluon. Two gluons make a photon. From there, it adds up in balls to make atoms at a certain stable amount, like I showed you, the stability. And then there's ones that don't have quite enough or have too many. Those are isotopes. And then they, they'll find stability at certain points. Now, if Don can defend this against what I just showed, I would like to see him do it. And I showed that when, when the W boson leaves the Z boson, it reattaches and forms the Higgs field. As the reattachment happens, you get the Higgs. And you see the black one being reabsorbed into the white. It's just... You can't miss it. And they say everything about this stuff now is observation. You really, th there's no way they can see all of those little neutrinos I showed you. There's a million different price points. <laughs> there's, there's ones that are really hot. And there's ones that are a little less, a little less, a little less, a little less. Well, and then they come and go. And they say they drift up through these different transitional phases as they move along. And they say it's like buying ice cream at the store, buying chocolate and on the way home it turns into vanilla and then by the time you get home it's strawberry and then after you eat that it's tutti frutti or something i mean and that's the way they say it, it changes i just showed you where they change everything i showed you is extremely observable and fits everything that they say except the standard model because everything is a dipole and everything is made out of electron dipoles Okay, so I'm asking Don Lincoln to respond to this because I say this says it all. I showed my particles. They have shown a lot of little diagrams and so forth. I showed actual pictures. And this is what a quark is. Now listen to this. This first paragraph says everything you need to know about my research versus his. A quark is an elementary particle, yes. It's a constituent, fundamental constituent of matter. Quarks combine to form composite materials. Yes, because they're just the tiniest thing that exists. They form hadrons, and the most stable of which are protons and neutrons. Well, 
I can buy that at some point. The components of atomic nuclei, yes, those are, they call them protons and neutrons. I, they're dipole electrons. These right here are the components of nuclei, not those big balls. No. They're all commonly observable matter is composed of these, these right here down to quarks and even electrons yes because part of these each half of each one of these little balls is the electron neutrino the other half is the muon the dark matter never knew it was here it's owing to a phenomenon known as color confinement which i showed you the different colors have different energies quarks are never found in isolation as i showed you they jump back together instantaneously they can be found only within hadrons whatever they want to call them which include baryons protons neutrons mesons quark gluon plasmas that's what they are quark gluon plasmas that's the real thing now, for this reason, much of what is known about quarks has been drawn from observations of hadrons. Well, I showed you observations of light, of particles of light. It doesn't get any better than that. I, w I expect Don Lincoln to respond to this. He's a public employee, and he's, he's, he's everywhere talking about the standard model. We've got to stay with the standard model. No, Don, we have to move on, my friend, and you, everybody knows it. Okay, so I'm going to finalize it right here. The standard model is an orphan theory now. This is Forbes. Do you think physics is dead? Well, it's not dead. It's just on life support. We just got to fix it. What's the standard model? Well, nobody knows. Well, the standard model it just doesn't work. Let's go with that. Standard model particle physics may be broken. That's a mild statement. Don, please, let's get together and talk this through. Sooner or later, you're going to have to address these issues that I'm bringing up. I have evidence, my friend. Everybody sees it. It's not going to go well for you if you continue to stonewall like this, really. I, we, I t told you that in the beginning. I don't mean to be this way, I, I, but I see it as a rivalry now.